So the Unity ECS packages just received an update, which include a fair number of minor upgrades to these packages. However, probably the most significant change is that the ECS packages are no longer considered experimental by Unity. They are now considered pre-release, so it's not quite that full 1.0 production ready release that we've been waiting for, but it is just one step closer to it, and I'm very excited for it. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty good quality of life update. However, that did fix one of the most annoying and frustrating bugs that has been a major issue with me since the beginning of 1.0, so I'm very glad that that has been resolved now. And ECS 1.0 is definitely seeming like a much more viable option than it did when it was initially released. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on some of the most impactful changes that have been made. Also, I do just want to bring up some other minor little Unity and Dots related things. So let's kind of start with some of the small things, get those out of the way. First thing, I do just want to remind you that the Unity Asset Store sale, their Black Friday sale, is still going on. However, it's not called the Black Friday sale anymore. It's now known as the Cyber Week sale, but it's still the same sale. Basically, all the same assets that were 50% off are still 50% off. They're still doing those 70% off flash deals every single day. However, they did add an additional 100 assets to the sale, such as the advanced cable creator asset. If you're creating anything with any type of cables in your game, I think this would be a good addition to it. And at $10, I think it's a great deal. Also, there's a YouTube video player asset. So if you want to play any Turbo Makes games videos in your game, this is the asset for you. And don't forget, we have some really cool flash deals coming up such as Gaia Pro, Stylized Cliffs, and some good ones from Decagon Studios. They make some really high quality and realistic assets that are going to be a great addition to any type of game or simulation that you're making along those lines. So anyways, go check out the sale using the links in the description below. You only have a few more days, so make sure you act quickly. Don't forget you can still use code TurboMakesGamesBF22 for 10% off all orders over $100. And thank you so much to Unity for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Another cool thing that I wanted to mention is that I've partnered up with my friends over at Dimension X and they're going to be hosting their first ever Metaverse Creators Hackathon. And this is a 24-hour hackathon where you're going to be creating a project using Unity's data-oriented technology stack. So the event actually takes place next weekend. So it kicks off on Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time and there's going to be a 24-hour period where you and a team of people are going to solve some problems using Unity's data-oriented technology stack. Then at the end of the 24-hour period, you're going to have some time to present what you've created to myself and some other people. And we're going to be able to provide feedback on the project that you've created. I definitely think it's going to be a really fun event. And if you've been looking for an excuse to maybe start using dots or just take a little distraction on a you know smaller little project for a 24 hour period, I definitely think right now is going to be a great time to do so. So I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can get a little bit more information on the hackathon and sign up for yourself. Now the next cool item I wanted to bring up has to do with the classic mobile game Jelly Car. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this game. It was definitely one of my favorites from the early days of the Apple App Store. And the developers decided to re revive the Jelly Car IP and is now creating the Jelly Car Worlds game, which is actually set to release next week. So definitely looking forward to that one. But why am I bringing it up here? Well, because it is a game built with Unity's entity component system. Now you may be thinking, okay, why is it using ECS? There's like a car and a couple other random little things on the screen. It's not that crazy complex of a game or anything. Well, it turns out that this game is actually a lot more complex than it seems because the game was built with a fully custom built soft body physics system. And basically every Every single point is going to be completely simulated using the entity component system for this awesome soft body physics system to work. And so the other day, the developer Wallaber did a live stream with Hassan of Unity over on Unity's Twitch channel, where they went a lot more into detail on the soft body physics system and some other cool aspects of the game, like how he was able to pull off this really neat hand-drawn look for this game. I definitely think that the stream was really informative and inspiring, so I'll definitely leave a link to that down in the description below. Now, if you don't have time to watch the full replay, I would highly, highly recommend watching Watching this video from Wallaber where he basically went into detail on how his physics system is set up. He didn't really showcase any of the code or anything like that, but it's a really just good high level theory overview about I know how his physics system works, what are some of the issues with creating a soft body physics system, and how he was able to solve them for his particular game. So I would highly recommend you going to check that video out. Okay, next little thing that I wanted to mention is that Unity recently put up a post on their blog where it's called Games Focused Expanded Scale for Ambitious Games. And it's all about Unity's data oriented technology stack. I think it's a pretty good overview into you know the state of what DOTS is and where it's at right now and where it's going to be going forward. I don't think there's anything like super groundbreaking 
in here if you've been kind of following along with the channel, but I definitely think it's, you know, always a good read through. However, there are a couple little nuggets that I do want to call out. For one, up near the top, they do mention that the Unity Dots teams are going to be doing one of those blitz days. So they've done this a couple times. The last one was at the end of October where they did with the multiplayer teams. And you could basically ask the developers directly, you know, any questions that you had on their multiplayer. So now they're doing one of these um, with Dots. This is going to be happening on December 8th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. And basically the DOS developers are going to be active in the forums, in the Discord community, on the Reddit page, uh, basically just answering any questions that you have about DOTS. So if you do have any you know, burning questions about kind of the state of where DOTS is or anything like that, this is definitely going to be a really good opportunity for you to you know, ask your questions directly to the developers who are making these new products. And if you do scroll a little bit further down in the blog post, you'll see that Unity releases some information about some of the sample projects that they're going to be providing us with the 2022.2 tech stream. So the first one is going to be the classic mega city demo, you know, that one big fancy showcase that you know really got a lot of people excited about dots and everything like that um, so they're they basically made an update to that so it's going to be fully compatible with the all the 1.0 versions and everything like that um, it does sound like that this is going to be available for us at the release of the 2022.2 tech stream so we'll be able to play around with the mega city once again but now in a fully 1.0 compatible updated fashion uh, so definitely looking forward to getting this guy up and running on my pc and digging into it the other cool sample project they're going to be providing us is this one called ECS Racing. And so here's a little screenshot of it here. Um, and just looking at this screenshot, I can already tell this is going to be a totally fun sample project. You know, just by judging off of the screenshot, this definitely looks like it's going to be a good sample project because it is basically going to be a real game that we can kind of, you know, reference and learn from. And I think it's really cool because it's actually going to be a multiplayer game. So we're going to be able to kind of learn a little bit more about how to actually set up a real multiplayer game project. Again, I definitely think that it's a good idea to have, you know, a good Good, polished looking sample project like this rather than something that's a little bit more abstract just like a bunch of random you know primitive shapes or something like that it's definitely something that I'm trying to do with more of my videos is making them seem a little bit more realistic and lifelike and by the way I know probably many of you haven't seen the video that I've recently put up talking about using AI art in games because actually all the artwork that I created for that dots 1.0 tutorial that I put out with these zombie who are going and you know eating the brains in the graveyard or anything like that all those textures were actually generated by an AI so I made a little fun video on it um, so go check that out one out if you wish i do think it's a fun video okay so now let's actually talk about the recent update that happened to entities 1.0 um, so you see that it's now called 1.0.0 dash pre 15 so that stands for pre-release if you go down to the previous version you'll see that it was actually experimental.12 and one thing that i do want to point out about this version of the ecs package is that it's actually not going to be the default version when you just go to the package manager and you say you know add package by name and you type in com .unity.entities. Even on the latest beta version at the time of recording, which is the beta version 16, it's still going to revert to the experimental 12 version. So you actually do have to manually specify the version just by typing in the 1.0.0-pre.15, just like that. And it's gonna go ahead and install the proper versions for you. And so you're gonna have to do this for all of the ECS packages, whether that's just the regular entities package, the entities graphics package, the physics package, or anything else. And I would assume that this is going to be cleaned up in the 2022.2 tech stream, which is set to release sometime this year. And so it's very possible that this version of the editor could be released any day now. So now we're officially in the pre-release and you'll see that the change log is fairly substantial. There are you know, quite a number of things that have been fixed and changed. Feel free to read through this yourself. Again, I don't think there's anything like crazy groundbreaking in here. It's a lot of just kind of like updating the API to make things more consistent, which I definitely think is a good thing. One thing that I do want to point out is kind of a, many of these like system base operations how we had like get singleton and like a get component. If we were to say implement these like these, you'll see that we do have kind of a little yellow line under here, basically saying that these methods are now obsolete and they're going to be removed after entities 1.0. So instead of using get component and get singleton, we're just gonna go ahead and use the system API dot get component and get singleton. So again, it's kind of one of those things where it just, you know, makes it consistent across system base as well as I system. So another change that I wanted to mention is a really cool alternative to the standard I job entity. So again, the I job entity is basically a way that we can schedule jobs across multiple entities. Now they did add a new I job entity, which is I job entity chunk begin end. Now you see when we do this, we get a little red line under here and that's because we need to implement some missing members. You see there's actually two of them that we're going to implement. So there's an on chunk begin and an on chunk 
end. And of course, we can still go ahead and implement just a regular execute method like this. However, the main difference is now, again, we do have these on chunk begin and on chunk end options. Basically, what this allows us to do is this allows us to do some work before and after the execute method runs for all entities within a chunk. So basically, the way that the iJob entity works is it's going to actually, you know, schedule across a bunch of different entities. Of course, those entities are going to live in a bunch of different chunks. And so this is going to allow us to do a lot of things. You know, maybe we can do some setup operations if we need to set some things up before we execute across the chunk. Also, another thing that we can do is we can check to see if that chunk has any particular components. And, you know, if it does or does not, we can kind of change some of the behavior based off of that. Another cool thing this is going to allow us to do is you'll see that the on chunk begin this is actually going to return a bool. So if we actually return false for this bool, that means the execute method is not going to be ran. So basically, we can say, you know, hey, if some of these conditions are met, you know, maybe we actually do not want to run the execute method on these particular entities. And then we can actually skip that. However, the on chunk end is still going to run after that. And you see at the end, this chunk was executed is passed in. That'll basically tell us whether the execute method had actually been ran or not. So I'm definitely really excited for this iJob entity chunk begin end. I definitely think this is going to be an adequate replacement for those times where we needed to use the iJob entity batch, which has now been deprecated. And so another thing that I do want to point out is there have actually been some changes to the transform system for Unity Dots. So a couple things that I do want to point out, if we say click on one of these random entities, you see that we now have these components for world transform, local transform, and local to world. And so basically the way this works is the world transform. This is basically going to be the exact world position and orientation of where an entity lives in the world. It should be noted that this is a read only world transform. So we can never actually write to this world transform. However, we can write to the local transform. Now the local transform is going to be the exact same as the world transform if this is not a child entity of another entity. However, if this is a child entity of another entity, then this local transform will basically be the transform relative to the parent. And I do want to do a video going into more detail on the translation system because it's changed a lot since previous versions. But I'd say in general, actually, the best way to interface with the translations is still going to be through the transform aspect. Now, another significant change to the translation system is that the physics system now actually does utilize the transforms v2. So this basically this kind of new version that was released as of ECS 1.0. This is now fully compatible with the physics system. So again, another step in the right direction. And I'm pretty sure it is also compatible with the netcode package, but I haven't just verified that myself. Now, next thing I want to mention is a really important and significant change. This was something that was a major pain in my side since the very beginning of uh, ECS 1.0, and it has finally been resolved. So I'm going to just show you this on an old version real quick. So you can see I just have this little you know simulation set up with a bunch of spheres uh, spawning that hit this platform and then disappear. Now, if we were to say click, you know, basically anywhere else inside the Unity editor, it's basically going to break the Unity physics. So now basically everything is just going through this um, little platform here. And there's basically no way to fix it other than to, you know, exit play mode and then re-enter play mode until it works again. And then if we say, you know, go click somewhere else within the editor, then it's basically going to break the physics again. And that was something that had been really annoying to me. However, in the new version, you'll see that if I go ahead and click, you know, wherever in the editor, it does kind of lag a little bit still when it's kind of loading things. Um, However, it doesn't completely break the physics package. You see that physics is still working as normal. So, um, you know, really excited and happy that I can now use physics again in my projects because otherwise it was just a total pain to debug without. And I actually went ahead and upgraded one of my projects to this new pre-release version. And there were definitely some little things here and there that I had to go through, you know, like some of the changes to the transform system because some of the APIs were just completely outdated. So I did just have to, you know, upgrade them to use that new API. Again, not all that difficult there. And yeah, definitely looking forward to showcasing this particular project to you. Um, it's definitely going to be a fun video, so stay tuned for that one. Anyways, don't forget to check out Unity's Black Friday sale, sign up for the Dots Hackathon, and make sure you ask some questions during the Dev Blitz days on December 8th. Anyways, with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.